you sit down, high five two people. Come on and tell them I'm going to connect the dots. Come on now, tell somebody that. Find somebody that. Give them a high five. Give them a high five. Tell them. I was going to tell you to tell them, are you my donkey? But I figure we've insulted <laughs> enough people today. <laughs> We're in week two of this series called Connect the Dots. Connect the Dots. And, and here's the idea of the series. If you could turn this mic up a little bit. I find, and I know this is not you because you're the perfect Christian and I'm not, I find there's certain seasons in my life where I'll look around and I'll think to myself, this is not what God promised me. This is not what I was expecting. You ever looked up in life and realized this is not what I was expecting? This is not what I was hoping for? I thought... I'd been retired by now. I thought I would have graduated by now. I thought I would have started my business by now or that would have happened or that would have happened. It's like I just thought that I would have been somewhere where I'm not right now. And even to make it maybe a little bit worse, sometimes I feel like God has promised me things, but yet I don't see them come to pass. God, you said by your stripes I have been healed. I'm still battling with this sickness. God, you send your word that you've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread, but yet I have to file bankruptcy. God, it seems like your promises are over there and I'm over here and I don't quite know how to connect the dots. Maybe you're in here and, and, and you haven't made a decision to follow Christ yet. Maybe someone invited you or you're just checking things out and you're not quite sure. One of the reasons why I find that people don't want to commit their life to Christ is a lot of times we feel like God's standards are too high. I don't know how to move from where I am in my life to what you expect from me. Your expectations are just kind of up there. There's this passage in the Bible that I like. It's John 14, and Jesus was talking to his disciples, and he said, hey, I'm going to leave you for a second, and I'm going to go prepare a place for you. It's so cool. Jesus talks about the place that he's going to prepare for us. He says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. Now, I don't know if you ever read that. A lot of you do this. I do this also. We read the Bible and we act like it makes sense when it does not make sense. He said, in my father's house are many now, why do you got mansions in your house? Well, maybe your father's house is just that big that it could fit mansions in it. But he said, hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I'm done, I'm going to come back and get you. But he says something interesting. He says, but where I'm going, you already know the way. And I could just picture, you know, you got the 11 disciples or 12 disciples. Judas ain't dead yet. And, you know, Matthew is kind of just like, I ain't saying anything. Bartholomew and Thaddeus are like, well, they don't let us talk in the whole Bible, so we'll just sit back here, <laughs> mind our business. Everybody's expecting Peter to say something, and for once in his life, Peter is speechless. <laughs> Judas is in a corner like, how much do mansions cost? I don't, I don't think we can afford that, Jesus. And finally, Thomas speaks up, and Thomas says, excuse, excuse, excuse me, excuse me. I know I'm not important to get a book written after me or anything like that, but I have something to say. Jesus, actually, we don't know the way. We have no clue where you're going. You ever felt like that? I know you're not allowed to be honest because it's church, but if you were to be honest, <laughs> have you ever felt like, Jesus, I actually don't know what you want from me? I actually don't know what the next step of my life is. I know what you've laid on my heart. I know what I think is God's plan for my life. But if I were to be honest, I have no clue where to begin. What's the next step? How do I connect where I am to where God wants me to be? What I want to do is take you just a few minutes and just give you some guidelines of how to make decisions in your life. Do I take that job? Do I move here? Do I start this business? Do I do this? Do I do that? How to, to chart the course of your life. In this story with Balaam, 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 um, there's no pretty way to put this. Balaam was a psychic. He, you know, called me now, Sister Cleo. 
Balaam was the type of guy that you would pay him to tell you his future. And there was a king of Moab, and, and Israel had, had started to get a reputation. You know, they came out of Egypt, and they had destroyed the entire Egyptian army without fighting. They just drowned them all, and the rumor has it that, you know, God drowned them. But let's be real, we all know that didn't happen. But somehow, you know, Egypt was destroyed, and then Israel faced another battle, and they didn't have to fight there either. God just started dropping hailstones and wiped the entire army out, and, and word was getting around town that you don't mess with Israel. So this king of Moab sees this whole country coming his way, and he says, I don't want anything to do with that. If I can get Balaam to curse Israel, turn them against their own God, then I don't have to deal with them. So he sends a whole bunch of money to Balaam and says, Balaam, please, can you come and, and cast a spell, or can you curse Israel? And Balaam says, well, I get my power from God what kind of psychic gets their power from God? It's confusing. That's what I said before. I get my power from God, so let me ask God for permission. God, can I curse your children? We did uh, child dedications earlier today, and, and, and I know if you ever want to get in a fight with a parent, just pick on their kid. <laughs> Any parents in here like, yeah, you can do anything to me. If you mess with my kid, now nah, we got problems. We got problems. Balaam comes to God and says, hey, Kenny, can, can, can I curse your children? God's like, are you crazy? Get out of my face. <laughs> Balaam says, no, God won't let me go. You ever wanted to do something that you didn't think God wanted you to do? But you re... <sighs> I mean, God, I know this house is more than I can afford. But I really like it. I mean, you know, you know, you know, wisdom is here. That house is way over there, and you still work in your calculator, and like, you know, well, if I don't eat for three months, and then I, <laughs> if I drop my life insurance, then maybe, I mean, you're just, you're just trying to make it work. And he said, oh, I can't do it. And, and the king sends him more money and says, how about now? <laughs> Has your prayer changed now? Balaam goes back to God, and God's answer hasn't changed. No, you can't go. Sorry, I can't come. So Moab, he, he, he ups the game. He said, I'll send you more money, and I'll give you whatever title, whatever job, whatever status, whatever influence you want, I'll give it to you if you'll just come. A question for you. What's your price? What's your price? Oh, I'll follow Jesus till the end. Unless... I hear my price. When I hear my price, oh. some people's price is a relationship. Ah, oh, follow Jesus. Unless somebody comes that looks better than Jesus. Man, I'll stay right where God's called me to be. Unless that job that I've prayed for just happens to be another city. Well, What's your price? So Balaam comes back to God a third time and says, please, 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 can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go? And Jesus is like, fine, go. But here's the conditions that you go under. Only if they come a fourth time and only say what I tell you to say. You can go, but only if they come a fourth time and only if you say what I tell you to say. Let me give you this, and I'll give you three blanks. We're going to get out of here. If you ever convince God to be on your side, then, then that's, that's not where you want to be. He's, he's smarter. He, he, you should jump on his team. Anyway, I'll write this down. First thing is this. How do I make good decisions in my life? How do I figure out what God has for me? The first thing you do is I must see clearly. If I'm going to make the right decision, I must see clearly. Now, one of the things that I like to do, and I encourage you with this, if you see something in the Bible that doesn't make sense to you, don't just accept it and move on. Well, it's written in the Bible, so it must be true. Don't do that. This is what you need to do. Wrestle with it. Like, pray and say, God, I don't like that. 
There's this verse in the Bible in Philippians 2. Consider others' needs more important than your own. I don't like that. (laughs) I think my needs are pretty important. But I find when you wrestle with Scripture, that's when it becomes real to you. So I'm looking at this, and and God tells Balaam, go. And then when Balaam go, God tries to kill him. I don't care who you are. That doesn't make sense. God, why are you going to punish someone for doing something that you've called them to do? As I was reading, I was praying about it, two things came to mind. Here's the first reason why. Because Balaam wasn't really going to do what God told him to do. Balaam said, or or God said, go, but only say what I tell you to say. Balaam was going, but Balaam was going to say whatever they paid him to say. He uh, got permission, I'm going to go. Whatever I need to do, I'm going to do it. I've discovered sometimes that we feel like God's trying to keep us from something. Doesn't he see how great my life would be if he would just do this? Or doesn't he see how awesome that would be? Or doesn't he see how, like he's, he's missing it. The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. I believe that means stay where he put you. Stick to his plan for your life. Watch this. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Can I tell you the biggest lie from the enemy is that God's trying to keep you from something. God doesn't want you to be wealthy. He wants you to be holy. God doesn't want you to be happy. He wants you to be humble. I don't know why I got to switch my voice. (laughs) God doesn't want your business to take off. He wants you about his business. (laughs) But the Bible says... And when I find my delight in him, he'll give me my heart's desires. Pastor, I'm confused. Then why am I not getting my heart's desires? Because I'm coming to church. No, he didn't say come to church. He said, find your pleasure in him. I'm not going to talk about you because you guys are perfect. I'll talk about myself. There's certain things that I want because it's God's plan for my life. But there's certain things that I want to prove to other people. You're the same way. Don't look at me like that. (laughs) No, 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 no. I got to get this degree. Because when I get this degree, you know, it's not even about anybody else. I'm trying to prove to myself. When did you become your God? You you understand, I got to get in this house because, you see, my dad, he always told me that I was lazy. He told me that, you know, I can't provide for a family. And when I get this house, I'm going to prove to him that I can do what he said I couldn't do. But here's what God knows. As long as we're living a life to prove something to other people, we're susceptible to compromise. Because our vision isn't on doing God's will. Our vision is by proving the naysayers wrong. I want to read this verse. It's out of the message translation. I want to warn you, message translation, they're not all the way saved. They're a little bit, you know. But this is what it says in James chapter 4, verse 6. It says, you're cheating on God. Wow, you just want to go there? Is that where we're going to start? Yeah. If all you want is your own way, flirting with the world every chance you get. What's flirting? You know, pretending to be open, but you're not really open. Hey. (laughs) Pray for your pastor. I mean, I wasn't really going to do anything. I wasn't really going to lie for my boss. I just told him I would, so he'd give me the promotion. Flirting with the world, every chance you get, you end up, ouch, watch this, enemies of God and his ways. 
What he gives in love is far better than anything you'll find. It's common knowledge. Now, it's not common knowledge, but the Bible says it's common knowledge. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud. But God gives grace to willing humble. Let me, let, me, let me give you something really cool about the Bible. So the Bible will talk about angels. You know, angels, Gabriel and, and Michael and, and, you know, came to Joseph and Mary and all these different people. When the Bible says an angel, it means an angel. Like Jesus was in the, the garden and he, he was crying and, and the weight of the world was on his shoulder. And it said that they sent an angel to comfort him. When the Bible says the angel, difference, right? There's an angel, any random angel. Then there's the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is Jesus Christ. Thousands of years before Jesus died on the cross, he came to earth prematurely just to oppose Balaam. Just to make sure that Balaam didn't go off in his own agenda. What we got to realize is it's not so much about the decision that we make. Listen to me. It's about the heart that we make the decision with. I dare say God doesn't really care what house you live in. But he does care about your heart. He doesn't so much care about what job you take or what city. God can work his plan anywhere. What he's worried about is your heart. Pastor, you said I have to see clearly. Why are you talking about my heart all of a sudden? Ephesians 1, 8 says this, 18, I pray that your hearts would be flooded with light so that you can see something of the future he has called you to share. I'll tell you something that every biology teacher in here might have a heart attack, but this isn't school, this is church. <laughs> you know you don't see through your eyes. You see through your heart. Do you know you don't see life the way things are? You see life the way you are. You ever talk to somebody about a plan that you had and it looked perfect to you? But because their business had failed and they had filed for bankruptcy and they had all their dreams crumble down. Oh, I don't see it. That'll never happen. You see it. Oh, it's gonna happen. It's right there. Look at it. It's right there. No, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. You both have eyes, but you're looking through a different heart. Paul said, My prayer for you is that your heart would have the light of Christ in it. And then you'll be able to see. You'll be able to make the right decision. You'll be able to pick the right spouse. You'll be able to, to write the right city and the right business. Decisions is not the issue. We get so, is this right? Is this wrong? Is this sin? Is this not sin? Don't worry about that. Worry about the light of Christ removing all fear and rejection and anger and timidity out of your heart. And then you'll be able to see everything clearly. I'll sit down with married couples and, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, it's, it's rough and, and I'll sit down, we, we got to get a divorce and, and it's just not going to work. And, and I'm like, okay, what's the problem? She doesn't like Lucky Charms. <laughs> what? Like, I like Lucky Charms and I never saw myself with someone who doesn't like Lucky Charms and I don't see how this is going to work because, you know, I like Lucky Charms. I'm being facetious. But they can't see how it could ever work. And from my side of the table, I'm like, I've seen it work with people that are a lot worse than you. Like, this is easy. <laughs> but because they're looking from a broken heart, instead of a place from the love of God, maybe you're in here and you're struggling with your marriage. Can I, can I help you out real quick? Don't leave the marriage, but forget about the marriage for a second. Just focus on Christ getting in your heart. And everything will look differently. Pastor, make up time. Okay, write this down, write this down. Got to move, got to move. They got this evil little clock that just ticks and ticks and ticks. I hate that clock. Point two, timing is everything. I got this little cool, cool thing. I wanted, I wanted to show you guys this. 
Anybody in here, you're like me, you are artistically challenged? <laughs> Art and you just you know, you, coloring inside the lines, uh-uh. Freehand, uh-uh. Yeah, I, 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 me and art, like, how do you fail art? I don't know. I'll let you know after church. It's just, it wasn't my deal. But there's one thing I could do. I could connect the dots. I mean, if you can count, <laughs> one, two, bam, three, five, four, <laughs> five, six, seven, got it, come on now, eight, nine, 10. Is the pastor really connecting to the church? Yeah, stay with me. 11, 12, 13. Oh, oh, man. I find when it comes to making decisions in your life, when you start off, they're so easy. Boom, 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 boom. Go to college? Yes. Don't be stupid. Do this? Yes. Don't be stupid. Don't do that? Yes. Don't. A lot of decisions early on are just don't be stupid. Okay. Yeah. And then you get to this spot where it's like decisions just come boom, 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 boom. 40 grand takes me 10 years to pay that off. Huh. But I tell you, make the decision, make the decision, make the decision, make the decision. And if you go from 13 to 20, then from 20 to 36, you start skipping numbers you miss entire seasons that God had for your life. That was good. The right decision at the wrong time is still the wrong decision. Can I tell you the type of person I am? I know you're not like this, I'm weird, you guys are normal. When I want something, I want it yesterday. Right. Not today. Today's too late. Right. Like, yesterday. And I'm the type of person where God, don't show it to me unless you're going to give it to me. Because yeah. <laughs> once I see it, now. I got married at 26. 26. I was ready to get married at 19. <laughs> okay, not really, but I thought I was. I was just like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. I've discovered the right decision at the wrong time. Boy, it's still wrong. First reason God wanted to kill Balaam is because Balaam had no intention to do what God called him to do. The second reason God wanted to kill Balaam is because God never told Balaam to go. Yes, he did. He said go. No, that's not what he said. Verse 20, it says this, And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them. But, oh, stick around for God's butt. But only the word which I speak to you, and you shall go. Rewind. Go back. It says, rise and go if the men come to call you. Caught that? What conditions are you allowed to go if the men come a fourth time? Track that? You missed that, right? You got it now, though, right? Watch this. Verse 21. So Balaam rose in the morning. Saddled his donkey and went. Any of you parents in here, you ever told your kid, you can go out and play after you finish your homework. You can eat dessert after you eat your green beans. You can do this after. What are you telling them? Yes, but in the right timing. Balaam said, forget God's timing, and he just jumps out. Can I tell you something crazy? If Satan can't get you to do the wrong thing, he'll get you to do the right thing at the wrong time. If I can't get you to date the wrong person, I'll bring the right person at the wrong time. If I can't get you to give up on that business that God told you to launch, I'll get you to launch it outside of God's timing. Whoa, what? No. Matthew 4, 8. And the devil took him, being Jesus, up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, being Jesus, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. 
This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Jesus hadn't healed one person. He hadn't raised any person from the dead. He had never preached. He didn't die on the cross, nothing. And Satan said, hey, I'll give you everything you see. Just worship me. Here's the deal. God had already promised Jesus that he'd be the name above every name the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that he would have everything. Here's the only problem. God's way included the cross. God's way included, in, included the spikes in the back and the crown of thorns and sharing our assets and getting married and the long way. I don't want it the long way. I want it now. I want it you know, Burger King, you can have it your way. God's way is you can have it. You just can't have it your way. Point three, write this down. Begin with the end in mind. Begin, begin with the end in mind. This is what happens when they don't give the pastor a dry erase marker. <laughs> Here's where Stephen is. You guys aren't like this. All I want is the next step. Do I take the job? Or do I, take, God, I, I, don't, I don't need your kingdom come. You will be done on earth. I just need, do I take the job? <laughs> That's all I need. Next step. And we're focused on this. Step after step after step after step not realizing that every decision we make is a stroke in a bigger picture. You're trying to make a decision. God is trying to paint the picture of your life. And I've found as long as I have my eyes on the next decision, I'll make it too fast or too slow or not at all. But when I get my eyes that... And please don't laugh at me, but this is the best picture. Oh, gosh, where do I go? Where do I go? Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, 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 missed it. Oh, that's bad. You can mess up sometimes. It's still going. God still loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all caught that? You see my, my dove with an afro? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Now to him who is able to do exactly what you thought he'd do. Now to him who's able to do just the next thing you want him to do. No, no, no. We serve a God that does exceeding and abundantly above all we can ever ask, think, or imagine. We're just trying to connect the dots, and God's trying to paint a picture of your life. We're just like, God, I just, I just need to do this. No, 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 no. Don't worry. Get your eyes on, on what I want you to do. You guys could play. I'm done. I'm going to land this plane. Can I read one more verse? I was going to anyway, but thanks for the permission. <laughs> Second Peter 2.15 says this. This was written thousands of years after Balaam had died. Let me give you this interest. Uh, I don't have time. Okay, I'll give it to you anyway. You know Balaam still disobeyed God? God went and God told Balaam, hey, make sure to bless him. And Balaam blessed him and blessed him and blessed him. But obviously Balaam blessed him and he didn't get paid. Because the Moabite king paid him to curse them. So Balaam went to the king of Moab after God had left him. Check it out on your own time. Numbers 25, I believe. And it says that the Moabite king took a bunch of prostitutes and sent them into the camp of Israel based on Balaam's counsel. And because the men of Israel turned from God's plan in their life, watch this. A plague broke out in Israel. If the devil can't curse you himself, he'll try to position you outside of God's will so you'll curse yourself. Balaam said, I can't get to them, but I can move them out of God's will for their life so they do harm to themselves. Okay, that had nothing to do with the message. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says they have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, 
thousands of years later, Balaam's name became a reference for people who didn't follow God's way. In the New Testament, when did people do whatever they want? Oh, you're acting like Balaam. You are Balaaming right now. <laughs> he said, Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquities. A dumb donkey speaking with the man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. Watch this, verse 17. The Bible says this is what people are like who don't follow God's steps but paint their own picture. They're wells without water. Think about that term, a well without water. What's the purpose of a well? To have water. To refresh anyone who comes to it. The Bible says that when you do things your own way, you may look the part but you'll always be empty inside. From far off, people may look like you have it all going on, but when you actually get up close to get something from it, there's nothing there. Can I tell you what God's plan for your life is? That you would be a person that waters others. That when people come and inspect your life, they're encouraged to keep going. That when people who are hopeless and suicidal and discouraged and depressed, when they encounter you, they're able to draw from your hope. They're able to be refreshed from your vision. God is saying, my way, can I, I'm, ugh, you're the pastor, you can't tell the truth, I'll tell you the truth. God's way is just the long way. I mean, I wish I could make it pretty and cute for you. When you do it God's way, it takes longer. It's just the way that it is. But when you do it God's way, you're filled on the inside. You're able to bless every single person that you encounter. And you don't have to erase steps and go back and, and draw again. It, 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 you, you get it right the first time. I don't know who I'm talking to. Someone, the enemy's tempting you to take a shortcut. Don't fix this marriage. Just go find a new one. Nah, that one's the happiest one you'll ever have. Nah, I don't do it God's way. Do it. No, 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 no. Just, just, just. I know it hurts. I know the cross hurts. I know the crown hurts. I know the whip hurts. But if you would just stick it out, he would put you in a place that you wouldn't even dare pray for but it's what he had for you all from the beginning. Can we pray? Father God, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. God, I pray right now, God, for supernatural strength. God, to stick it out. God, I pray for those that are being tempted to take the shortcut, to take the easy way, to jump out in front of God. God, give us the patience to wait, God, on you. God, for we know that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts higher than our thoughts.